Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, I was gonna do a, try to do a quick video explaining uh how to use self-shielded flux core. There's two different kinds of flux core wire. There's a, a shielded, a gas shielded flux core, and a self-shielded flux core. The self-shielded has no gas. It has the the properties inside the wire and everything. It, it's made to shield itself, similar to a stick electrode. And uh, I've been getting asked some questions about it, and this and that. So I figured I'd try to do a video on it. I hadn't welded none in probably four years. I ran it for a few years out here because you notice I weld outside 99% of the time. And it was, it, you don't have to worry about the wind with it as you will with a gas shielded uh, flux core or gas shielded solid wire. And so it was always handy for me doing that. And then I just kind of went to solid wire and never went back. But anyway, I got some and I'm going to try to show you a couple tips on how to use it, how I use it and uh, how to set it up in your machine. So anyway, this is what I went and got. I just got one of the small two pound rolls. If you can read that. This is 030, inner shield. The self shield is usually called inner shield. The gas shield is usually outer shield. This is a cap for your gun. You know, with solid wire, you have the brass right there. And you can use that, I mean, but it's really, it, you don't need it. This uh, little plastic hard cap, it's really better. It's kind of ate up on the end from when I used to use it before. But anyway, one of the first things, I got my roller out right there. One of the first things, I know this ain't going to focus in, but this groove around here is, is what they call knurled. And you always have to have a knurled roller with flux core. The smooth ones just don't push it right, you know. So... Make sure you have what's called a knurled roller to set it up. Also, with a self-shielded flux core, you're going to have to run DC negative, which basically means with this solid wire, the one coming to your lead or and the one coming to your ground is on negative. The one coming to your lead is on positive. You got to swap those around to where the one running to your lead is on negative and that's going to get you set up right off the jump right there make sure you do that or it's not going to run quite white so i'm going to get that set up in there and we'll go from there all right i beveled a couple pieces of steel out and uh i got a couple more pieces over here but what we'll do the first time this is just 3 16 plate so what i'll do the first time is just run through this groove right here it's kind of the flat position in my opinion anytime you Especially with 3 sixteenths or over, you should be beveling the steel. If you're going in a, a butt weld like that, I think it should be beveled because it's going to get down in there. It's going to give the weld somewhere to go. It's just a better a better process. So we'll do this one first. And uh, I go with the, on this stuff, I go with the recommended machine settings. On, on solid wire, I usually don't. I kind of tweak it around a little bit. But, um... Uh, and those settings jump a lot for self-shielded flux core between different size metals. I don't know why it jumps so much, but it does. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to run that one first. And typically, with this, because it has a slag in it, you're going to want to drag that thing. Because if you're pulling it behind, you could be pushing that slag back into your weld. So you kind of want to drag it at all times. Sometimes you just can't, you know, and... But that would be the typical thing. Held at about a 45 degree angle. Just pulling it back. I go side to side slightly, depending on what I'm doing. I may just drag a root in there real quick. I blew a piece out right there, so I may run a tack right there first. But anyway, we'll get going with that right quick.
All right, on that, I just kind of went side to side and sort of a weave fashion on it. That's the slag on top of it. Usually it's not too bad for coming off if everything went pretty good, you know. And that's not too bad for it. This is a different, like I say, this is a different process. So it's not going to look like solid wire if that's what you're going for. You're not going to get that. And if you don't have it switched over to DC negative, you're going to end up with so much spatter around here that it's just going to be crazy. It's still got a few pieces there, but if you don't swap over, you're going to end up with spatter everywhere right there. So anyway, I'll set up another, another weld right quick and we'll look at that one. All right, I cooled the plate off and I got it set in an upright position to where you would go uphill if you wanted to go uphill or if you needed to go uphill. The first thing I would do, since it's beveled down pretty thin right there, I would turn the settings down and drag a root downhill in the center right there. Because if you just try to go up without a root in there, it's going to want to blow out a whole lot. So I would turn the settings down to probably the eighth inch settings and just drag a root down, clean that up, let it cool off, and then come back and go uphill. All right, that would be the downhill route. And you see there's still plenty of room on the sides for the bevels to catch, for you to catch your bevels while you're going up. I had to restart there because I forgot to start the camera. But, uh, so now we'll use the same settings for eighth inch because it's already hot. The plate's pretty hot right now. And I'm gonna use the same settings for coming back up. And coming back up, if I can show you with this screwdriver, you'll start on the edge, whip across, you pause on your edge, Whip in, in kind of like a rainbow fashion, pausing on each edge. Don't pause across the center, just come on across, pause on the edges, and keep coming up. All right, that's the one ran uphill. <clears throat> we'll get the slag off of it. I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in how it's gonna look, but <laughs> we'll see. I hadn't done that in a while. Yeah, let's just break the plate down. Hold on, let me set the camera down to clean it. All right, so that came out pretty good. That's how you would run uphill. And I know that you can't see what I'm doing. This is a really bright process and a really smoky process. And I know you can't see what I'm doing when I'm welding it. But when I start at the bottom down here, I start on the side, whip across, pause, whip across, pause, keep going up, whip across, pause, whip across, pause. I usually count like one Mississippi, one Mississippi two sometimes in my head when I'm pausing and just keep going up. The same on the flat one, it's kind of just the opposite direction. I'm pulling, pausing, pulling, pausing, and same thing, and running root on both of them. All right, right now, this video is getting long, isn't it? I'm going to do a lap joint right there since I got another piece hanging here. We'll just do a lap joint. It's pretty much the same process and just to show you that one right quick and I'll go back to the to the recommended settings on here because it's, it is just a lap joint and it's on uh, it's all solid metal right there so we'll go back to the recommended machine settings
All right, on this one, being a lap joint, I think I blew out. I think I got some porosity right up in here somewhere. But on here on the start, I start at the bottom and just a barely side to side move, movement while I'm pulling it. Going to the top edge of this, back down to the plate and just pulling it at kind of a medium speed. You don't want to go too slow, you don't want to go too fast. I guess I didn't get any porosity there, I thought I did. <laughs> So anyway, like you see, it comes up to the edge. If this plate was thicker and you couldn't get all the way to that edge, you could just run a root in there and then come back and cap it or multi-pass it if you needed to get up to that edge. So anyway, like I say, just to recap, on something like a butt joint, you're just barely wiggling back and forth and pulling at the same time to the top of your edge right there, back to your plate. Your flat uh, cap, I ran a root in there first, a little small downhill root, or just a, a flat root. Side to side, pausing, just kind of whipping across the center. You don't want to stay in the center too long. And just basically the opposite on the uphill. You run a downhill root in there, and then going up, whip, pause, whip, and sort of a rainbow kind of fashion. So anyway, I don't know if this helped anybody. I know y'all can't see what I'm doing when I'm welding because it's too smoky, it's too bright. I don't have arc shot stuff. So I hope this helps somebody. Uh, like I say, make sure you have a gnarled roller, a gnarled roller. Make sure you switch to DC negative or it's not going to act right. Uh, other than that, man, it's just, it's just a matter of getting used to it. Clean your plate. It will burn through a lot more stuff than solid wire. And don't look for what solid wire looks like because it's not going to look like that. It's a different process. It looks different. It runs different. You just have to get used to it. So anyway, I hope this helps somebody, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Here's a sneak peek of the next video coming up. A double barrel with a reinforced bottom. I know you can't really see that, but that's the next one. So anyway, anyway man, I hope this helped. Uh, Y'all come back for the next one, man, and please like and subscribe.